I don't think he's going to be here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so it means to be called the order. Roll call. John Brewer. Present. Art Christie. Yeah. John Horn. Here. Joanne Cow. Here. Alan Shiner. Here. Cliff Robofo. And Sam Spada. Adding a quorum. We'll go to the previous minutes. Has everybody had a chance to review those? Yep. Any addition to her? Corrections. Motion to accept the minutes. I make a motion to accept the minutes as written. All in favor? Communications, uh, let's, let's do that at the end. Okay. So, I don't want people to sit here any longer than I have to. <laughs> uh, old business, we have Justin Mia and Malaya. I think so. Sherman, new owners of 123 Birch Creek Road, requested clarification from the planning board in regards to the permit going with the property or not the owners would like a special use permit that was issued to the former owners updated with the new owner's information. Uh, are they here? Are they here? They are not here. Oh. Uh, well, let's push that to the end. Okay. <laughs> They're not here? It's too damn. No, it's it's too Okay, new business, special use permit, McKinley Hollow, LLC, 212 to 220, McKinley Hollow Road. Uh, section block and lot, 12, 140. Oh, are you here? Yes. Okay. What's your name? Dan. Dan. Okay, you presented this at our workshop meeting. And, uh, for the public, would you just come up and give a brief? Can you bring the other two and the survey as well? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So this is two sets, I believe. From yeah. The of these are another two sets. This was the partial survey that was done. This is from the um, surveying company because the, the lot extends upwards and over into um, Hillside. So this was the partial survey and topography that was done. Um, but I will certainly provide the, the, the full survey. The purpose of that is because the project like years, there's setbacks that we have to go by. Mm -hmm. So we really need to know where the property lines are, so we can determine our stuff back. Any of the um, yeah, any of the structures that we are constructing, or anything that would have to be considered for setback, you know, is indicated on the lower survey um, down here. I think we're just missing the upper. Yeah, we're here so we won't be building anything. We're going to leave all that land just vacant across the top. Yeah, that's fine. But if we had the bearings and distances that the, the surveyor would sign off on, then that would be good. Yeah. I, I have it. I did not print it. So just to review one more time, um, the idea would be to reestablish the, uh, the property that was there. Used to be the mountain gate um, lodge, um, and there's currently three existing uh, sites, uh, three buildings that are um, on the ground, and we would like to propose to take 
one of the foundations that is currently there to rebuild on those and uh, to move the other two. One of them uh, take that down, and the other one would be taken out of the floodplain. So the property is partially in a floodplain, in a flood zone. And um, what we would like to do is kind of move it into a safer spot. Um, there are um, 12 units that are in the main building of the hotel. And there are an additional 18 units that are kind of standalone hotel rooms. 10 um, units, you said? 18. 18. For a total of 30. Um, the existing structure used to house a, um, a restaurant that might be familiar to, to some of you, um, an Indian restaurant that I think now moved to Woodstock. So we would like to reduce the capacity of that significantly and have it more of a, a lounge for the guests. We actually would be taking down that whole entire building that the restaurant was in. Mm -hmm. um, we won't be doing a commercial restaurant there or the bar they had in there. In the lobby, we're actually going to relocate to, there's an existing pool um, on the site that we want to repair and update. And we would actually be moving lobby and reception over next to the pool. Um, just keep completely getting away from that whole, you know, restaurant and that structure they've had. It's, you know, it's taken kind of extensive damage with, you know, buildings falling on it, and, uh, trees falling on it, and it looks like people have gone in there and taken copper and stuff out of the walls, and it's kind of just been ransacked. So, um, you know, we're looking to do something a little more low impact. We don't want to do a full service restaurant or, or bar and create traffic. It's, you know, in the lobby area, there's just going to be a small, you know, concession basically for the guests of the place. So, so it won't be up to the public? It will be if you know if someone wants to come come visit, but we're not targeting it as a full service service restaurant. Um, you know, it'll just be open when we have a full house of guests. But we definitely love people to come visit, but it's not our main. You know, won't be our main focus. It's really just to kind of you know serve the people that are here. We have a very similar project in Wyndham, New York, right now. For some of you that weren't here on the last meeting, where we've done this, we took on uh, Route 23. The Hillside Mountain, and as soon as you come into town, it's a very similar setup where we have one main building that's like an inn where um, you know we have the lobby and reception in there, and then we did the same product we're proposing to use here these Lushna A frames um, up there, and they've been quite successful. People really, really, really like them, and you uh, know, I think it's a good product for here with the, with the floodplain we have down below on the lower part of the land. You know, we can, these are elevated that put us actually above the floodplain. Um, so, pretty low impact. We like the, you know, we're not looking to do massive landscaping. We kind of want to keep keep it as it is. The idea is to be like, these little units being tucked into nature and kind of hidden as much as they can, um, you know, for a more quiet kind of organic experience. Not a big fancy, like, you know, one main hotel building. It's a little more, you know, you've got these 10 little secluded kind of units up here. Each one has its own private bathroom. And they're not like camp bathrooms. They're tile floors, you know, European wall hung toilets, glass glass roofs on the on the um, bathroom building so you can see the stars when you're taking a shower. So it's for the, you know, upscale people. I don't say upscale, but it's for the people that want to come and camp but really don't want to camp. You know, it's like the couple where the guy wants to go out in the woods and, uh, you know, and the partner's like, no, it's something a little nicer. So... <laughs> Each one has like a queen size bed in it and you know, high end sheets. And then the other units are more, you know, these ones down here are more geared to the families that want to come up and ski Bel Air and stuff. So, so the ones on this end here will be the A frames? Yes, these will be the A frames. And, uh, and the other side will be, uh, I consider more like standalone hotel rooms. They have a little bit more space, they have a bathroom on the inside. So it's a bit more um, comfortable yeah. for guests and also. And there's photos of them in there. Um, the tent platform? Were you doing any tent platform? No, they're actually they're actual no. solid foundations, yeah. not platforms. Yeah. They'll be, you know, like here, they'll be pinned into the stone and uh, poured concrete pilings. Now, will you be able to supply us with the uh, baseline uh, elevation information and the elevations of the, the floors of these, and so we know just how far the, out the, the elevations are. have communication of that. Um, so, pardon. <laughs> I'll try. 
Go ahead. Um, All right. The so elevations the elevations and Which building is going to be removed? Uh, so is it on the map? It's no. not indicated here. No. It's sitting in the middle it's of where it indicates meadow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So there are photos of these uh, existing buildings, you know, over here on the left. Building C is the one, the building on top of building B and building A will be the two that will be coming down. There's also some other just kind of shacks, right? Like yeah, there's some other, um, I think one of them was um, like a storage kind of thing. They were filed, but yeah, I think it was a storage garage or something that um, is on the old plans too, that all that will be coming down. Um, the floodplain here is indicated with uh, the dotted line on the plants, and then the uh, everything is kept out. Yeah, building A, which is the. Um, I, I'm a little confused. Did you just say building A is coming down? Yes. Okay. So building A is coming down. A. The main one with the restaurant. Correct. Which is in where it's the middle. Yeah, so building A, which had the which housed the oh, restaurant and everything, that. and had the biggest. That actually is down here no, in the middle. That's marked here. Okay, building but it says building A here. Oh, this would be the new building A, B, and C. Oh, Sorry, this is the <laughs> these are the old these are the three old buildings that are currently on the property, and these would be the the new ones. Okay. Bless you. So this will be this is the existing pool that's there, mm -hmm. and you can see the line. This is the floodplain here very odd the way they have it um, so this puts us you know this building actually right now is you know is down in it we'll be moving it up moving up here this will be the lobby and reception now mm -hmm. this will be the um, you can see it later in the plans but this is gonna be the one that has 12 hotel rooms and then these will be the single single a frames Are these on piers they're on piers yes so they'll be drilled and pinned into the stone and um, on piers and these will actually be on piers as well okay. which will put them above the flood line. That's what I was getting. Yeah. Be All of them will be above the Now, where is McKinley Hollow Road? Where is the end? Some call it McKinley, some call it McKinley. It's yeah, <laughs> spelled two different ways. And I run off of Olivera Road. Yeah, but I know that. But I mean, where is the entrance to all this? Uh, the, the road goes straight through. So here's the, the roadway. And this is the right of way. So the property is essentially split. So your property sort of goes. Yeah. On, the other side. on the other side yeah. of the road. Yeah. And then the entrance is here. Yeah. yeah, it should be right here where the parking is. It's not the pasture, right? There's no more pasture. But you're almost talking about a dead end. No, it is. It's a dead end. Walsh is the next house. Next to There's one more house up there. Walsh is the next house up from there. Yeah. yeah. And there's several houses on the other side of the road on the stream side. What? This is the next to last house on the Kenley House? I believe it's the second or yeah, the second. On our side of the road. Okay, yeah, the road. there's so one more house next to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a big sign out there now that says Mountain Gate Lodge. Yeah. Oh. And an old abandoned tractor trailer in the front of the property, too. I think it's kind of the first thing you see when you when you drive up the road. And you left a old uh, trailer full of something. You never did very enough to open it up yet and see what's in there. So. That'll be getting hauled away. <coughs> so it has a special use permit as a you know as lodging as a hotel. Um, you know we are adding some rooms, the upping the room count, but we're getting rid of a lot of the capacity on the you know on the systems um, by getting rid of the restaurant and bar. So. The driveways that you have shown are they going to be gravel or paved? Are they going to be gravel driveways? Um, so it's a, it's a loop so that there's fire access that way. Yeah, it'll be but packed be stone, packed stone where the fire department will be, and it'll be wide enough where the fire department would be come in, be able to come in and make the turn and come out and access more. So we'll be close enough here. These units are accessible from the main road, um, distance-wise. And then this one here is the 
one of the new driveways and one of the old ones. Right now, the driveway extends from, so this portion here up to here is the current existing driveway. Yeah, this this driveway's here, and the parking lot's actually here now in front of the where the restaurant is. We're relocating it down here to the to the front of the property, so this can kind of get more absorbed back into nature. And this is the wet wettest area of the property, so we're just leaving all this, you know, leaving all this open and just putting trees. Were people driving to these? Uh... No, no. no. Um, we we have a lot of Parcels. So we have 30, so have 30, 30 places, and you have and you have 30 units. Yeah, 37 parking spots and 30 units. So, four, so seven essentially for four employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one per room. One per And then this will be, you know, we'll have, uh, you know, golf carts here for the property, so no one's driving around. And again, like the idea is to keep it as low impact and as kind of quiet and natural as possible. Yes. So it looks like all your drainage is going this in here. From the surface work. Right. Yeah, this is the low spot on the land. There's actually, well, Coming down off the hill here too, there's a um, runoff that comes down and then hits the stream, I guess, over here and kind of goes around us. So you just, the runoff's off these new buildings. Is there any calculation on that, John? Is how much water we can expect to be coming off of those roofs? No, but, coming down. I mean, actually, but it's going to be probably less than it existed before, but we certainly can look into that. I think it'll be significantly less because you have two much, much larger buildings with, you know, as you can see here with, with the big roofs, and then this one uh, is kind of quite a sprawling building, um, which already kind of sits here and water's already coming off down into this area i think you know these are going to lessen it because they're they're really high kind of pitched a-frames so i'm just thinking they're not in a public hearing if this neighbor comes out and says feels as though he's going to end up with more water on this property you be prepared to be show that he's not yeah okay. i was going to say it should be Thank significantly you. less given the um the footprint of the existing so I think I heard you say there's no parking anywhere except in the parking lot. The central location. Right? Yes, centrally located parking. Right. Not right in the center. <coughs> <laughs> um. So no, no, but none of the guests are going to park anywhere other than that works. So I don't know. Yes. Um, we will have golf carts to kind of shuttle them around on the property. In this long spot here, okay. what is this going? The idea for this was, and this is um, flexible, but the idea for this was like, uh, a sauna, uh, kind of like a little spa area. So it's not habitable as far as like an overnight stay. Mm -hmm. This would be more of a, a sauna or there's also... But you are putting that in? Yeah. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the same barrel so. mm. Yeah. <coughs> and what did we talk about during the workshop of lighting or signage? Do you have a plan of that? Or? So the, um, we're basically going to duplicate the same sign we have on our other one, which is just a hand-painted wooden sign with, you know, two small pin spots on either side. Um, there's going to be low walkway, um, solar walk, sorry, why can I say that? Walkway lighting. Um, here, um, you know, there'll be, um, there's some existing poles that are up now that we're going to keep for um, lighting the parking in the path, but again, super, super minimal. There's going to be no big overheads. It's to try and keep it like, you know, as much in, in nature as possible. Okay. 
Can you just include in your package the uh, lighting specs of okay. the ship? I can do it another sheet. Yeah. Right now, these are the walkway lights, little dots here. Um, but we'll do a bit more specifics. Yeah, those. And then each one out on the exterior, each one of these, they just have one small square LED um, on the outside of each one of these um, gatherings. How much more traffic do you think you're going to produce compared to what it was? I think from what it was before with having a full service restaurant and bar in there, I think we're going to actually create less vehicular traffic. Um, I mean, you know, now it's basically an abandoned property, so, um, you know, we expect with 30 rooms, we, you know, average, you know, 50, mid 50% 50 occupancy um, overall, so, you know, um, most of the times it's, you know, no more than like, you know, here on this property, be no more than 15 rooms full at most times. So we're talking, you know, 15 cars, um, which I don't, you know, I never visited when it was a restaurant. I heard it was quite popular um, when it was open, um, and, uh, which I think would generate more, um, more traffic than that and more in and out. So. Um, you know, most of our guests now at Eastwind will come up. It's you know we do a two, three night minimum, two or three night minimum stay depending on the thing, and they kind of come and they park and you know they're they're there on the property. And here's some even more because the, there's a really beautiful hiking trail across the street that leads people to not have to to drive away. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this would be kind of a little retreat for them. It's such a beautiful property. I wish I could have saw it when it was in full operation. Um, we get to see it again. And then where is the creek? It's on the other side. It's on the other side of the street, across from us. Okay, but it doesn't show. It's all. It's not on your property, then I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the other side. But it's still a floodplain. So at the location there, you can see building, you know, speaking back to the, uh, the locations of the, the, the location. cabinets or the, the location of the, the small ones currently don't exist. The location of the main building of the 12 towers, that is in place of the, um, what formerly was known, I think, as building C, right. existing building C. Um, building A, which used to be in the meadow, would be relocated out of the floodplain next to the, the pool area. And we would reduce it by completely by one building in, in totality. Currently, there's three. We would basically do how many, how many uh, bathrooms were in the old building? How many bathrooms? Um, it was roughly 20 or 16 units plus bathroom units plus owners' quarters. The the flow rate for the property was significantly higher than than what we would actually need. Um, the it was uh, sized for I believe up to 8,000 gallons a day, and with the units that we are proposing, we would get to three to four thousand gallons per day at full occupancy. So that would be and that would be even less with um, given the seasonality and the, the midweek slash weekend business. And there's one septic system somewhere. <coughs> There is the existing septic system. I don't know if the show can speak to that. Yeah, it's on here somewhere. Uh, oh, three right. tanks and a grease trap. There's an existing septic system that was in operation years ago. And there's no indication that it failed or that it was it's not in operation or not operable now. Uh, we have documentation for the inspection, the construction, and everything of that sewage system. And that appears just to be. Uh, a little bit above where the pool was. Oh, here. That's the field. Yeah. And then the tanks are all. The tanks tanks are, all the sewage was directed down to a low spot here in a pump chamber. Okay? There were septic tanks individually in several places, and then liquids came down to a pump chamber at a lower point from where it was pumped up to this field. And that's probably the concept that we're going to 
duplicate because the existing field is a, a very large and a very well built one. Uh, uh, we inspected some of the distribution boxes. There are two there, and they're in excellent condition. The concrete is like it was brand new. So that should be uh, operable and, and serve the facility. That's the plan. Okay? And, and uh, naturally, we will have to, that will have to be dealt with with the health department and the New York City would be paid. So they would sign off on that once the proposal to them is made. Mm -hmm. And inspections, I'm sure, as well. You want to just go down the site plan checklist real quickly? They've answered a lot of the questions, but if we just hit it, yeah. I'm not going to say anything. I'm 16 for the one that works in the plan. It's across the street. Okay, most streams are Brooks then draining through the property. If they are, we'll show them. They have your, the uh, contour shown there, which shows the drainage. I would just be prepared, like I said, for that for the public hearing. You got to think about what any neighbors would be an issue with. Or, Usually it's the water runoff, it's usually the traffic. Yeah, we've met both we've both met both neighbors on either side of us and talked to them and explained the project and kind of walked them through what you know, walked them around the property. So they kind of already, you know, have their run down so far and there wasn't any real hasn't been any objections from them yet. So now some things they in our, our cove calls for 100 foot setbacks and some call for 200 foot setbacks and cabins and that. We'll have to, yeah, you, you know which is, which is which that they would be required on this one? For the setbacks, it's R5 district, so I think the uh, setback is you know, no. uh, 60 feet. It's in our code, it's got special ones for cabins or, or uh, for camping. Facilities. Um, not aware of that. Mm -hmm. We just been here to take a. Wait, is that a residential zone? Oh, oh, five. Oh. Uh, location proposed use of heights of all buildings. That's what I was in the impression. 75 feet. Um, just a setback here, which we we met basically. Yeah. Yes, we have elevations of all the buildings with the heights. Can you see the cabins from uh, the property line? Or is there enough woods and vegetation? In um, we plan on doing vegetation on the site, well, on the street side. There is vegetation there right now. Um, these, I don't think you would be able to see. They're kind of tucked into the the trees. These we plan on giving the guests a bit more privacy and also for um, people that are driving past. Yeah, there are already there are already trees and shrubs here that we want to augment and kind of make these more supportive. Location design and construction material of all parking and truck loading areas with access and egress drives there too. 
pretty much have that out there. Yeah, there's a gravel path. Provision for pedestrian access, which they show anything like that. Should they be checked as not applicable or not applicable? instead of being blank? Number seven and eight. I'm looking at this. Yeah, I mean they, they've shown they showed on their maps. Yeah, but I mean it's, it's not checked, done or and not applicable. I thought I thought you were supposed to check. Yeah. Every line I He's looking at the application. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm looking at what we got. Well, it doesn't. <coughs> Dan, why is we service space here? That's fenced. Is that going to be fenced in? This this service space, yes. Yeah, so there's an existing small um, building here now. Um, and um, yeah, so what this will be, this will just be a decorative fence around it to basically park the golf carts behind so you can't see them. Dumpsters there too? Yes. outdoor storage of the equipment and materials if any that will be in the service space here he's talking about location design construction materials of all existing or proposed site improvements including drains culverts chain walls and fences yeah. um, so this is uh, the stone veneer the wood siding the elevation of the building materials. Can you show where the culverts will be underneath the, the roads, the driveways, and that? Um, I don't think it is. Is no, yeah, right now there are no culverts, and I don't think we're going to be adding anything over. There's no drainage that goes, that's going to be going across the roads, no. I don't think. No. The road right now is slightly elevated, so there's not going to be... Yeah, and all the water's on the other side of the road from us. Okay. So that would be NA, not AP. Yeah. Description of method of sewage disposal. We went through that. Description of the method of... If anybody got any questions on the board, just say so we can communicate as I go along here. Description of the method of securing water supply and the location design and construction materials. So you have a one well, two wells. Oh, what's the supply? I believe there's actually two. I think two. there's the one that is currently um, close to building, the existing building A. And then I believe there's a second one. Um, and those will be tested. Make sure that they have sufficient. You want to yeah, we we'll do a drawdown test on them. You want to show those on your site plan where those locations are. Location of fire and other emergency zones. They've uh, they discussed that with us at a workshop meeting. They had one of your people was with the fire department, right? And we yeah. we had um, initially we had actually proposed to utilize the um, the logging road up here, but this became. Too difficult, and I think also um, much easier, much easier access for fire um, to move them downwards a little bit and have this kind of circular. Yeah, and that's why we created uh, this loop for, here for fire access. Are you the ones that had false alarms in the? No, that was. Um, was the other one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the two similar projects. Yeah. You the and someone else. Fire department was with that. Uh, oh, okay. The other guy. Jesse Hooker. Greece. Alpine in. <laughs> Location design, construction materials of all emergency or energy distribution facilities, including electrical, gas, and solar energy. So you have an electrical panel. <coughs> electrical panel right now is currently right there. Um, we're the, at the entrance of the, the main building basis. So we would be underground to the to other buildings. This one already has access. Um, this one would read. And I'm already has power going to the pit of house. Oh, yeah. So there's a temporary panel um, <coughs> outside of the old building A right now here in the meadow, and um, that's where it comes in. And it'll be, it'll be buried 
to the new buildings. Location, size, and design, construction materials of all proposed signage. Did that. Location of proposed development of all buffer areas, including indication of existing vegetative cover. We just discussed that. Location and design of outdoor lighting facilities, including data, including data regarding when appropriate lighting levels, both within the site and the site boundary. So your spec sheets on your lighting will answer all that. Designation of all the amount of building area proposed for retail sales, office use, or similar <coughs> commercial activity. So, probably show uh, what the area of usage is compared to the acreage of the property. Hmm. That's just calculation from the uh, surveyor or engineer. Detailed landscaping plan and planning schedule, including the number of <coughs> types, location of all canopy trees. I think, uh, I don't know, I would waive that, but I, I think what you have here is mm -hmm. sufficient. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yes. the woods for crying out loud. Crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Building elevations uh, sections at a scale sufficient to delineate clearly the massing and the exterior materials, and textures, and colors of all buildings and other structures shown on the site plan. And also, uh, like I said, we'll need to know the base flood elevation and then the elevation of each of the floor. We're in the process of getting the, um, the flood plan certificates. Is any uh, I was thinking I should take a ride up there and just to look at look at it. Is anything going on now? No, nothing, nothing going on. Um, we just did some exploratory work for the septic system. I haven't um, seen the place in ten years. Or so. It looks pretty. It looks pretty rough right now. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful piece of property. Yeah. We, we Feel cleared, free to go take we a walk around. Right? A little bit so that we can actually see what we were working with. Um, Rush hopped it, and that's about it. So you gonna go take a look? I think it plus that other place where uh, well, yeah, yeah. you can go up to the other yeah. ones I'm in the neighborhood. It, it was pretty badly damaged there. Yeah. Who the outbound in or this? This one it was. It was yeah. I think the, the I think what happened during the flood it was just washed away the, the road access. Uh -huh. The building itself didn't it it didn't flood that area. Um, but I think after the road was gone then it just kind of yes. left. It really, it to, to looks like they ran away. It's, yeah. There was stuff in the refrigerator. I mean, still from eight years ago, there's stuff in the refrigerator. There's clothes mm -hmm. strewn everywhere. There's trees that have fallen well, like on it. I think that people been... did have to really run away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When that flood happened, they had your neighbors there. I know and they had to get out of there. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think we can at a point. We can set this up for a public hearing. If, yeah. if you think you could get everything, we, we yeah. definitely can to the next meeting. That'll be uh, it's on December, second week, second uh, Wednesday of December. Okay. <coughs> December thirteenth. This says December eleventh. Does it? I. You could be better, right? Before. Discussion. I'll take a motion to uh, move this to a public hearing on December 11th at 645. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Thank you. 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 Thank you.
you want to buy a house and open up a an Airbnb next door to somebody, just do it. Oh, That's what it's saying. No, I don't know. I don't agree. I mean, they got, uh, they're looking to enforce it with inspections and stuff. They don't have that now. Yeah, but you can't have, you know. You they should have a certain section for these. They shouldn't be allowed everywhere in town. That's what I'm saying. I mean, who wants to have a whole block of the Airbnb? That's right. Mm -hmm. And I know Miller Road is almost like that. Almost every house is in there. Well, they don't say what, what it takes to get a license. Well, they haven't got that far yet. Yeah, they okay, so they just, there's a license now. Right. The devil is in the details now. What do you need to get a license? Now, anybody can go to these meetings that they have for these committees. Anybody in the planning board wants to go. I mean, I know Sam's there, but any other way you would like to go, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, the committee is just going to make recommendations. And then it's going to go to the town board, and that's going to go to the public hearing. And then it'll probably be sent back to the committee for changes. Um, <clears throat> uh, the last meeting I attended, we were still stuck on definitions. Yeah. And uh, the recent meeting I wasn't aware of. I was away. I was out of town um, on Veterans Day. They had a meeting. And, um, they, I think they began to, to speak about you know, restrictions and Things that, you know, like parking and the amount of bedrooms, the amount of parking spaces. I mean, those restrictions are going to come in the next several meetings, I believe. Okay. Well, it's kind of impractical if they have to get a permit from the planning board. Isn't it? No, not planning board. No, no, no. From the That's building from department. The town. Okay, so you can get permits. I have, I have yeah. something I have to say. But we, did, we do special permits. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to the county. I think that what you might want to consider is to simplify this. Because the more that we put into it, the more we get involved, the more it's going to conflict with other things in our audience that are going to come up later on. Uh, I sent the paper, and I get things everybody got the one that I sent, and it's just basically just put a time limit on to it and you know there was a fee that means it would be registered in the town you can have control of. Mm. But I've seen things like this in the past <clears throat> and the more that you put into it, the more complicated it gets and the more it brings in other conditions in the ordinance. Well I mean there's <coughs> other conditions in the ordinance already for <coughs> lodges and, and those places which so, yeah, but you don't want to cause conflict with these other ones. When you have to do something like this and you get very, uh, I'm going to use the word complicated for a lesser term, there's going to be other things that come up and they're going to say, well, hold on, look at what it says here in the ordinance. It might be for bed and breakfast, it might be for a lodge, it might be something. And why is this permitted when this isn't? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening right now. Yeah, that's it. Happening. Well, that's why the lodges have to do you know, inspections and, and test their water and stuff. Where the short term <coughs> rentals doesn't have them to do any of it. So, and I'm concerned with community character, neighborhood character. I mean, that has a lot to do with it. If you own a piece of property, and I know that people up here own a piece of property that are paying twelve and thirteen thousand dollars a year taxes on it, they don't want this next door to them. This is what I'm saying. That's the most difficult part of right. the issue is community character. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and, um, I, I would encourage people to come to the meetings and then in the beginning initially there were a lot of people who came from the SDR. Home sharing uh -huh. committee. Very, few, very few people have gotten up to speak about community character aspect. Uh, I'm concerned with that because I already have it surrounding me uh -huh. where I live. I mean, I, I don't want it like right next door now. You know, that's what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's happening in Woodland Valley. Yeah, I know. One, one study I did, I, I don't have the exact numbers, 
but I looked at how many residential lots are in Chandaken. It's roughly 1,600. <coughs> then how many people get stars? 700, which means 900 don't get star because they don't live there. Right. So it's, <coughs> it's you know, I forget the percentages. I wasn't ready to talk about this, but it's far more than 50% of the homes in, in Shandaken they don't get they don't get star because they live somewhere else. They're getting star somewhere else where where they live. Oh. So it's uh, and these are the ideal Airbnbs. I mean, they're not they don't really live there. They're just occasional. Wow. In your code book, there are regulations for home businesses and that is what controlled people renting these short-term rental properties in the past. So I suggest you go back over your code book and find out what you got in it. I guess that is a home business. That's a home business. business. A home business. Home business. Home occupation? Yeah. No, home, yeah, home business. We've had regulations for home business. It's in that code book. There's a home okay. occupation, class one and class two. Right. And then there's a neighborhood business. What are you referring to? A home businesses. Neighborhood business, if you're gonna if I buy a house in a residential area, I do not expect to have the property next to me being residential to all of a sudden become commercial. It happened already one time in this town with Collins Stoneyard, where it was done illegally by the zoning board where they put commercial business into a residential area, they spot zoned that property, which was residential. Okay? That's what you're going to see here. Now, this board at one time, not this particular board, but the planning board, went to the town to get all of these properties along here that had businesses on them at the time, all of these hotels and stuff, to get them, you recall it, or to get them rezoned commercial and the town would not do it. They stay residential, and if they close down, like this place has been closed down now for a number of years, so whatever permits to run at, revert away from it, and it goes back to residential. Well, I'm hearing what you're saying, but the confusing thing here is that it's still a residential use. <laughs> No, it's a commercial use in a residential district. It's a business. This it's a, a business, business in, a, in a residential area. I agree with that. But that's the problem that the nation is trying to figure out. And well, it's, it's let, let's worry about Shandaken and forget the rest right. of the nation. But it's also the biggest boom for this area, and you have to be aware of that. What's the biggest boom for this area? Short-term rents. Well, you want, you, want, you, want, you, want, you want them next to your I house? Have them. I have them, and they're fine. The ones that I have are fine. They bought a house that cost a million seven to build and turned it into an Airbnb, and it's fine. I, I see no difference between The problem is that we don't have enough housing here to satisfy vacationers. So Airbnb has made this uh, an area that people can come to. That's why we're having people build restaurants. We're having people build all sorts of facilities up here. It's because they now have a place to stay overnight. So, and also the people that own these homes that want to move couldn't sell before. Now people, my friends, they put their house up. I have two friends that sold their house in one day. In one day. So, and they both became Airbnb. So you have you to consider that as, that's a, that's a positive thing to our neighborhood. But on the other side of that coin is that there's no rentable space here for the people. There is no place here. for people to come here and live permanently. That's the problem. But they're, they're never going to live in a million seven house. They Why can't not afford to rent a million seven house. 
you talking about affordable housing. Right. They, 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 yeah, but did they buy, a, let me ask you one question, Alan. Did they buy a million seven house to come here to rent it out as a commercial industry? <coughs> or did they rent it to move into it? The, the, they the, bought it in a residential district, didn't they? That's correct. Well, I understand that. that's your answer right so, there. What is the difference between somebody who rents their house for six months or one year versus somebody who rents their house for one weekend? The number of people that come up on a weekend, and you got the complaints right here at this board about these people coming in. Well, they'll rent for two, and twenty will show up. So that's what has to be controlled, yeah. not short-term rentals. Well, the, the paperwork that we really sent out, that I sent to Sandy and sent out to everybody, put a thirty-day limit on it, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It was like the definition was under thirty days. That's right, which makes yeah. it short-term rental. <coughs> right. Right, your definition was very simple, and it was to the point, and right. I think that we might want to look at that. Uh, Howie, if you can please give me a call, I'll come to the next meeting, and I'll bring that definition. Did your board get, did they, did you get it, the definition? No. No, no that only can be a pass yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. When is there a um, meeting? The, I mean, the committee that existed before this committee already established that that was part of the definition was less than 30 days, 30 days or less. Um, so that definition had been established a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, but my point was not the definition. My point was that if you're allowing people to rent for 30 days or more, how do you know that the people that are renting are not going to do the same nasty things that the people who are in for three days, bringing dogs up and having parties. I mean, it's not a question of how long they're there, it's a question of who you're renting to. But it is part of the definition of what a short-term rent Right, and is. people that are paying $1,000 a weekend to rent somewhere, they're not having, they're not looking to, to shoot guns and, and to have dogs up and everything. And some of them are. Yeah, they are. Well, they're they're doing that's, it. that's what has to be take, that's what has to be looked at. <laughs> but that's what has to be looked at. Not you don't want. I don't want my neighbor. If he, I don't want my permanent neighbor to be shooting guns mm -hmm. right. or to letting his dog go, dog loose. Mm -hmm. So that has nothing to do with whether it's a short term rental, a one month rental, mm -hmm. a six month rental, or one year rental. Mm -hmm. I don't want people letting their dogs loose. So the, this, these are the things that have to be addressed, not the fact that you're ready for, for three days. Well, who's going to keep track of uh, 30 days? Right. Well, you know, you'd have to oh, log wait. everybody in and then uh, <laughs> check them right. out. Right, and you get me a new car. Yeah, right. And check in. Well, yeah. well, it's easy to keep track of. But Woodstock well, tried I, to do I, that by I, getting downloading all the short-term rental locations. Mm. But whatever happened to that? Do we know what, what happened to that investigation? Didn't Woodstock go online and, and download all the short-term rentals that were in the town? The county, the county, the two sprites with that information. But it's hard. I think I've just read that the short-term, the Airbnb folks are going to be more forward about giving information yeah, about where. Yeah, they're supposed to be turning out the yeah. information of who they are. Um, well, it's obvious that we need a balance yeah. too. So um, I think we're on the right track. Yeah. Okay. So how does you do I don't know if we're going to get to the end of the track. I don't know. It's nationwide. Right. Okay. Well, right. the problem I see that it's created is that people who want to live in this community can't buy affordable housing. And every time another long-term rental is turned into a short-term. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that has a major effect on it. They're buying the houses and they're using them only for short-term rental. Which then only drives <laughs> up the rental, the, the long-term rental rent prices. Right, and exactly. I'm scared to death to leave my rental and go somewhere else because I'm going to pay three, four hundred dollars more because she can, she can rent this my place out a split second, but I'm not going to get something comparable at that price. That's the two-fold problem. Not available because they're doing the short term rental. And the price and drives the it, price right up. And the price is going up. And also, it has an effect on the employers in this community because everywhere you go, restaurant, it's help wanted. Mm -hmm. well, you know. Yeah. They can't get enough of people. Yeah. And then some of you that work locally don't get it paid, enough, paid enough to afford the, the rent. Affordable, uh, you know, what's considered affordable. 
housing. Rental housing, yeah. I mean, I think I read something in New York. It's like you need to make $26 an hour to afford a modest one-bedroom apartment. Did she take it? Well, it said New York. It was New York State. Modest one-bedroom. All right, we're not going to solve this tonight. Let's we'll <laughs> move on. Come on. Let's figure it out. Yeah. Uh, so we got the Alger County Planning Board. I was just going to say that. <laughs> adult entertainment. And every time somebody mentions it, it's adult. like a curse word. Yeah. Define adult. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's dance. We don't have any. <laughs> we have no restrictions. Hey, the town of Ashland over in the middle of the mountains over here, yeah, where we go? there's about 50 people. They have a code death there on adult entertainment. Yeah. yeah With it. pictures. <laughs> we looked into that a number of years ago. John, but you did. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. John, any topic you want to cover? No, I just thought that if we didn't need uh, credits, there might be something to help us. Maybe it could help us with something. Uh, Besides the uh, short term, right? Anything else with you? Um, there's a this rebate is available to municipalities for purchase of hybrid all electric or hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Um, that's purchased as after July of this, this year. Uh, also for installation of charging stations, there's rebates available um, and funding. So that's something. What's no, that about charging stations? If you install, rebates. if a municipality installs a charging station, right. you can get a certain amount of rebate mm -hmm. um, from New York State DC. So, and that's if you also purchase, also if you purchase a hybrid or electric vehicle for your municipality, you get a rebate on that. That would be good for the town, the big purchase. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, building inspector. So there's a community development block grants, and that still has more information on that. Um, they apply for assistance with low-income housing, housing rehabilitation, septic upgrades, and home ownership grants. Sounds like something we might want to look into also. Um, and um, there's a library services grant. Um, I forwarded that to some of the library people. Hopefully they'll look into it. Um, Catskill Aqueduct, they're going to close down the whole aqueduct for algae removal and they have to reroute the water supply from other sources. And New Pulse will get water from Delaware Aqueduct. So some of these reroutings are going to be pretty complicated. That <laughs> they have logistical problems. Um, City of Kings and the Kingstonian project, they uh, renegotiated the uh, low affordable housing which was a big subject of debate. And uh, I think they reached a compromise of 10% uh, of the project to be affordable. I was told at the meeting, 10 units. 
and I don't know if that equals to 10% or if that's a ballpark figure, but they're going to redo the whole project design, add another floor for the affordable yeah, housing. Right. And then, yeah, and they're going to change the design of the place. So it might turn out to be a nicer project. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's about it. Is there any, is there any uh, grants available for rubbish cleanup? Um, like tire day? We have many That's a that good thing to ask Dennis Doyle to do a, a training on, I think. What we can be done with that? A day, a wood day. Because That's people a, have no place to throw their yes, rubbish out. Yes. We had the one for the refrigerators over the summer, right? Yeah. Metal pick up. Yeah. yeah, I noticed there's a lot of large objects just lying around that nobody disposes of. Right. Cars. And uh, yeah, I Cars. think that's a big need in, in, the, in the town. Um, yeah, that's worth looking into. I don't know what other locations do themselves. There are other towns in the state that have electronics day. I know that they run it in Kingston, but that's, you know, that's hard to get to. Uh -huh. The facility in Hunter, which will accept all of that stuff. Yeah. Do you have to have an appointment uh, for that at Hunter? No, you can no. go. Uh, they just have certain hours. Six days a week. Okay. Every day. 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 Yeah, you, you have to, have to, pay, to pay, pay to get rid of all of it. You have to pay to get rid of the uh, electronic stuff also. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So they go by weight. The only thing that's free is metal. Although I found out today that if you have printers and stuff, you can take them to Staples and they'll take them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's all electronics. Yeah, they'll take it. I think Best Buy also. Okay. Do you think of it, Thank you. Oh, you got anything else you want to um, I don't have anything else in there. Joe, you got anything for us out there? Oh, I'm enjoying a nice planning work. Uh, <laughs> All right. This is the, the Justin Baia, Amelia Schumann. Oh, yeah. about the special use permit being changed over to their name. Right. Um, How long has that place been closed before they were? Oh God, I have no idea. If the approved use ceases for more than 12 months, special permits for for mining. No, that's the second part. <laughs> a special permit or site plan approval. That's fine. That I'm saying. Uh, so I will have But that's for mining, right? No, no, Sorry? No, I'm saying this part here. I know, but isn't that paragraph come out of our code under mining? Mm -hmm. I think. This just says uh, 24 months. If a certificate of occupancy has not been issued or if the approved use ceases for more than 12 months. Okay, That's a special permit or site plan approval. And, okay, yep. And that's like a second paragraph. So I guess that's, that's, a, that's a condition we had on that when that was approved then, apparently. Mm -hmm. Is that the way everybody sees that? <clears throat> yes. So, so it's a condition for the special use permit? On this particular one. Right. Right. And the one that they presented here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If a certificate of occupancy has not been issued or if the approved use ceases for more than 12 months, it expires. That was a condition of this particular one. Apparently. That's on the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, because I don't think that's always a condition. No, I don't think so, but it, I think we should, you are. we should pay attention to that. Oh, I see. Okay. I don't think it's a bad idea because if it ceases to exist, then people get used to, you know, they move in and then, and then all of a sudden it goes back to being something that was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should be this. It used to be put on a lot of the, the applications. I don't know, about 12 yeah, months. Or so we need to find out if this place is going to open. What, what started that was with the town tinkering and the tubing and things like that. They were required to come back. 
and renew. Oh, just and to be because, there. Because so many things could change. Right. When, when was this last in operation, right? Yes. Well, my example was you could get a special use permit to put a cemetery in. And what happens if someone sells the cemetery? Do you have to dig up all the coffins? That's foolish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no. But if it's, we put a special condition on... If you put a special condition yeah. on, then that's... I think that's a good idea to keep in mind when we, get, when we do these site yeah. or use permits. Because it doesn't say in our code book. <coughs> I, I couldn't but, find it in the code book. No, it's not in there, yeah. Years it ago, is on the mining, but... Years ago, I remember being here and people came for permits and they would put all these special conditions in mm -hmm. with the code. Mm -hmm. So... Because Friday is my last day, I want to make sure that I hand this over. We need to know when this bed and breakfast was last in operation. Yes. If it was in operation within the last 12 months. Well, how long have these people owned this? Um, they're, they've got to be relatively newer. I mean, they've been prior to the purchase. Um, I don't really know. I don't even know where this really is, to be honest with you. Um, everything is existing as it was with the previous owners. Well, it, it doesn't matter. Last if December was, they, they purchased it. Last December. So I went to here. Did it cease to be a bed and breakfast for 12 months? Right. Yes. Before the period. Yeah. Before yeah. they well, It's got to be very close. Yeah. It's very close. How do you prove something? They would have receipts that they rented. Yeah, yeah. they're doing Airbnb now, I believe. Oh, wait, no, she says uh, and if, if we wish to continue as a bed and breakfast, so <coughs> we'd like to continue running as a bed and breakfast. Yeah, they have been running it as a bed and breakfast since they bought it. So previous to them owning it. Was it? Was it a full what, Okay. Well, let's assume that it's less than 12 months. Do they have to come again? So they want to have it in their own name. I don't what's the What's the deal with that? I mean, if, if it's allowed, it's allowed. Right. What right. difference does it make? I, I don't know. Because it goes with, the, goes with <clears> the land. I mean, I can send them an email tomorrow tell them that, that you know, don't open a can of worms that you don't well, need yes, to. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I suggested to Sandy that we put in the, you know, in the file, each file where this is granted, a letter stating that it has been granted permission as a special use permit, but not necessarily listing it in the only name. It says it's not personal to the applicant, but it fixes to and runs with the ownership of the land. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to point that out. I'm going to send it to them in an email tomorrow. And yeah, just find out. I will do the worst that can happen is they have to come here and we have to get the difference. Yeah, Sandy, you can just contact the association of towns and they'll tell you that in two minutes. Okay. Kerry can contact yeah. the association of towns. Is that it? Uh, I believe that's it. Anybody uh, want to? You're welcome. A motion to adjourn? Motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll set it up. <laughs> All those in favor? Thank you, everybody. Thank you, all in favor. It's not official yet. What was it? Have they counted? The absence? No, I don't think so. But it's so close. It's like 30 between 1 and it's like 10 between. It's 35 between the lines. What did you say, John? John. How many answers? I don't know. I know that there was enough for them to uh, not make it. They want to know. You got anything? How many absentees are left? Absentee ballots. About 60. 60. Well, enough to make a difference. Wait, have they been counted? No? Oh. Oh. Tuesday morning. No, they have oh, Tuesday they're going to count. November 18th. Oh, I thought it was the 12th. No, they're doing the absentee. They're, they're doing They're going to do it no, Tuesday. Like to say oh, it's not Tuesday morning. morning. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sandy. You did a wonderful job. Thank you, guys. Yeah. It was my pleasure.